drop, we probably did a, I had to drive 1,200 kilometres from Nova Scotia and he up to northern Vermont and he dropped me off at French Hill Acres. So I've got a map here, so as you can see, French Hill Acres is there. And it's just near the little town, oops, town of St Albans. And this is the Canadian border across here. And so Mike, Mike Palmer has his apiaries on the east and west side of Lake Champlain in Canada. He uh, has about a thousand production hives. There is honey, honey production hives, <coughs> about 700 nucleus hives, and about 400 mating nukes. So he's got, he's got a fairly big operation. And uh, he's a, a non-migratory beekeeper, so all the, all the hives are in one spot. Well, in multiple spots, but, they don't, but he doesn't move them around. So um, I arrived on Monday about in the, in the middle of the day, because we had another 600k kilometres to go. Um, and I dropped my bags off at the, where, where I was staying. Um, I gave Mike a call, he was out in the field and uh, he gave me some directions to a paddock. Yeah. So it was a little bit hairy at first, but we managed to find the paddock. It was fairly long, long grass, wild flowers, it was yeah, beautiful. Uh, fairly hot, it was 30 degrees or something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't, Li Yi Ping, the Asian girl here, I couldn't understand how she could wear the, the bee suit. It was very, very hot. Um, most most of the guys, well, you can see Mike sitting there. He's sitting in a t-shirt. That's he, that's how he does his feet picking. So um, yeah, they're pretty pretty tough over there, I think. So he's just got his little couple of boxes, a little makeshift table there, and um, if you'd like to go to the next one, Steve. So it's a field, and there's a lot whole whole lot of mating use. So if you don't know what a some people may not know what a mating nuke is, um, but uh, Mike produces about 1,000 to 1,500 queens a year. And um, the mating nukes, he make, uh, gets the bees to make the queen cells, and then, then he take, takes them out and he puts the queen cell in the mating nuke, and I, I, I can't remember how many days later he comes back um, and uh, has a queen, queen catching day. Every four days he has a queen catch day. Um, so a couple of people, a few people just move, move from hive to hive, open up the hive, uh, have, a look, have a look at the frame, check to see if the queen's laying, um, and then find the queen. Um, the first person who finds the queen on their frame will take it over to Mike at his little makeshift table and uh, he'll mark the queen and put it in a cage and he puts nine attendants in the nine worker bees in with the queen. There's a few more than we do over here, I think we do about five or so, but he likes to make sure that the, the queen is well looked after. So this, this is one of the mating nukes, this is a double mate, mating nuke, so the frame's about half the size of a, a standard bee frame and you can see there's four frames frames aside. Um, okay, and then there's, Mike, you might see, he's got a little, little bunch of nurse bees in the corner here, just sitting here. Um, he's got his, he uses, um, when he doesn't like the pens to mark his queens, he uses uh, test stores model paint. And the, um, so he doesn't like the pens, and he just grabs a little, what he calls a piece of timothy grass out of the field and snaps it off and he just uses that to mark the queens. And there you can see, there you can see he's marking the queen there with, with this timothy grass. You can see he's got quite a number of holes in his fingers as well. So, <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> and he's, he's, he's a great... Well, one of those people that just loves loves teaching you things, and um, here he was telling me or giving me some guidance about how to, to handle the queen bee. So you can see he's got the queen bee 
by its wings there, and he was just saying that basically you let the, the queen bee grasp, grasp onto your finger at first, and then it can go to the next. And then, it's is not a hand model, by the way, as you can see, but, um, um, and then he's just gently holding the, the queen bee um, by, by the, I guess, the head or the thorax there, and the abdomen just curls nicely around the, the finger. Uh, I didn't, I haven't, didn't practice on hip bees because they were thirty dollars a piece, so I didn't really want to. Uh, say, <laughs> I didn't want, really want to say, "Oh, sorry, Mike, can I have another one?" Sort of thing. <laughs> so uh, I'll practice on my bees. I'll practice on my queens. Okay, so that was that was the first half day. This is the next morning. Um, this, uh, this is up back up at his sheds. We were. Um, just sorting out some some nuke box, about 40 nuke boxes to um, super up some some of his nucleus hives. Uh, so that's Kate there putting some boxes on the truck. Okay, there's a, just another shot of his shed and um, nucleus boxes. Okay, and the truck. I don't think there's much I can say about that. But there's, there's the truck. <laughs> Okay, I think this is a video. I think if you I think it's a little I'm not sure if I can Well maybe not. Uh, can you go to which is the next one? Uh, oh it's selling, is it? Oh okay. I took a video because it still didn't really show, but this is his that's his um, it's called Decker Apri and this is his where he does all his queen production. And then, a bit of cinematography there. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so that was just a, a scan. We can go to the next one. Okay, so this is where, he, as I said, this is where he produces all these queens. So there's two parts to the yard. There's his cell, cell builder hives, and they're, 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 these are his nucleus hives. And this is um, this is what he calls his sustainable apiary. So ba basically, um, with the su with the sustainable apiary, all his resources for any hives or any anything that he does comes from these nucleus hives. And basically, they're a ten frame. This is a ten frame, a ten frame box, but it's split in two. So there's two colonies in the box and there's obviously two entrances and then he just builds this is a colony going up here and then and another one down here and I guess um, he started the sustainable apiary because um, he couldn't see the wisdom anymore of buying uh, nucleus hives, queens, package bees uh, from Georgia, Florida, and places like that, and they weren't. Um, but basically, Florida compared to northern Vermont, you get in northern Vermont in the winter you get four feet of four feet of snow. So, um, you know, his part of his reasoning is that um, it's better to produce local queens um, in northern Vermont than in uh, than buy them. From the warmer states in the US, um, and, and the other reasoning is that he he, he started beekeeping before tracheal mite, before varroa, and things like that. So when those when those hit, you know, he was they were coming out of coming out of winter with 20, 30, 40 percent losses, and then he was spending. And he was at one, that stage he was pollinating apples. Um, up in the northeast, and he was basically spending all his pollination money on on getting new stock. So, so the, the so as I said, this is a sustainable apiary. So, uh, if he has um, a weak a weak honey hive, it's just it's not diseased or anything like that. It just needs a bit of a boost. He'll he could get what he calls a bee bomb from from one of these. He could go through these um, nucleus hives, and he could he could pull out ten frames of emerging brood, 
and he could stick, and he could put that on the bottom box and then put his put the rest of his hide back on and he, he and he said it's just like an explosion when all those nose bees and and things emerge it just gives the hide a huge boost uh, if he needs drawn comb for, for his any of his uh, hides then he'll pull it out of here he'll anything anything that he needs but he won't if he's got a if he's got a weak production hive, a honey production hive, he won't take resources away from a strong honey production hive. He'll he'll take it from from the the nucleus hives because he doesn't see the wisdom in in weakening a strong hive. And so in this apiary here, um, all the resource the resources that he's getting from these nucleus hives mainly is nurse bees. When you um, if you can go to the next hive, oh, this I'm sure there's a few people here that haven't done any um, queen rearing before and I'm fairly new to it as well, so I'll explain as best as I can. But this is a this is a cell builder here at the front, okay? So that the, the this hive here makes um, queen cells. Um, and the hive at the back has been turned around, it was in that front position, but it's now in the back, it's been turned around 180 degrees. Now the first step in, in, in making a cell builder is, he gets this box here, and he puts 10, 10 frames of emerging brood from his nucleus hives in, in that box, no, about eight frames and two frames of honey on the outside. Okay, then that back hive at the back, that in its original position at the front here, he'll mm -hmm. put that middle box, he'll put a queen excluder, and he'll put that middle box on top, and he'll leave it for 10 days, and in that 10 days, all the nurse, all the new bees will hatch, and so there's thousands of nurse bees. And after 10 days, in the morning, he'll come, and he'll turn that, he'll take the middle box off, he'll put, he'll turn that back hive, around 180 degrees, he'll put a box of honey down the bottom or, or nectar, nearly full, and then he'll put the box that had the nurse bees in it on top of here, and then he will get another 10 frame box with a queen excluder nail to the bottom, and he'll go to the brood box at the hive at the back, and he'll sieve even more nurse bees into that uh, cell builder, and there's so many nurse bees in that cell builder that they don't all fit in. It's just cho chock a block full of, full of nurse bees. And this box here, this has got a one gallon feeder can in it as well. So he's feeding from the top, there's a box of honey down at the bottom, um, packed full of nurse bees. It's just, um, and the other thing I should say is there is no queen in this cell builder. So in the morning he sets it up like this and it hasn't got a queen. And I'm not sure if you've heard of this um, term before, but he describes that hive as hopelessly queenless. I, love, I, love, I just love that term. So those queens are just crying out, those bees are just crying out for a queen. They can't, can't find a queen. So. He leaves that until the afternoon and then he comes along and he puts his um, graft, his frame of um, grafts in. Now a frame of grafts, for um, people who may not know, um, I'll show you one in a sec, but basically he has another hive where he can time what, um, the age of his larva, so he, he takes larva that's, that, that's 12 hours old, so an egg is an egg is an egg for three days, and then it turns into a larva. So he can time time um, how old the light. He can arrange it so he knows that he's taking larva twelve hours old. Um, so are nurse bees baby bees that need nursing, or are they bees that do the nursing? Uh, bees have different duties as they as they get older. So when when they emerge, they're nurse bees. So they'll look after the they look after the, the oh they'll make I, I've omitted to say something they make royal jelly. So 
say, I mean, you've got a hive called nurse bees there that are just are going to make huge quantities of royal jelly for the, for the queen cells. So, yeah, nurse bees, they make royal jelly, and they, but they also look after the brood as well. That's one of their sort of their, their early duties, I guess, yeah. And then they turn into workers and they'll go out, be a worker bee, and they'll go out looking for honey and pollen and, and then I think later on there they sort of guard the entrance and things like that. So they have different duties as they get, they get older. Okay, thanks, Steve. So that's the, this is when, it's the, that's the, the gallon can of sugar syrup at the top when, when they open it up. So there's a lot of bees in there. Thanks. And this is Kate, she's taking the, okay, so you've got the, this is the, uh, the frame where the, it's covered in nurse bees and there's queen cells amongst that that you'll see in a minute. So, as I said, it's in the box, there's two frames of nectar at either, either side of the box and next to this frame would be a, a, um, a frame of pollen as well. So, Sorry? Is the corn any kind of resource when it's flowering for the bees? No, I don't think so. Actually, the, that's one of Mike's veins, really, because a lot of the corn, it's maize, and it's, it's um, taking away a lot of the flowers, a lot of the wildflowers, and hedge, you know, they, big companies, they buy up the, the farmland and plant maize, and yeah. As, as, as farmers are going out of business, big companies are buying the, the land for maize. Thanks, Steve. So there's, so there's the queen cells, as you can see. All, all individual queen cells. There's a bit of burr comb on those, but they can, that's easily trimmed off. And they just, you can see there's a little sort of plastic device here. It just sticks up into the frame. You can just twist it and it'll, it'll come off. Thanks, Steve. And that's just uh, a lunch break at the yards. Yeah, with, among, with all the bees. Oh, you had to watch when you're drinking that you didn't drink, <laughs> drink a bee as well. Um, okay, so what amazes me about Mike is that he's got you know a thousand honey hives, seven hundred nukes, makes a thousand to fifteen hundred queens, and he's got Kate on the right hand side. He's, she's a good reliable worker, and, and Zach, who you might, I think I've shown a photo of Zach, but you'll see another. Kate and Zach are uh, maybe a couple more, but that, that's, you know, he doesn't have a huge team of workers. But, <coughs> but what he does have is a, a whole, a constant flow of enthusiastic people that, that come um, to help him over, over summer. So you've got um, Richard from Kentucky here, he's a on the left, he's a retired engineer, so he brought his trailer up for a couple of weeks and parked it in near the honey shed and uh, is just giving Mike a hand. So here we're, um, as I said, um, taking some nukes off. So I think we did 40 nukes that day, so we're taking a couple of frames of brood and a frame of honey and a frame with some pollen in it. So they're four, four frames in a box. Um, sorry, actually, as you can see, it's um, whoops, a divided box again. So, so two, uh, two nukes per box. Um, a month from a month when I finished there, the previous month, he made 380 nukes. And that's another thing about these colonies. This, the, the main thing with these nuke hives is that they're supplying resources in this apiary for his queen production. But on that day, we took about 300 pounds of honey off it as well. So you've got the honey as well. You've got queen production. And we took 40 nukes off, off this as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's a, a really good system. Oh, the other thing, I've, the small thing is the bricks. The bricks on the top of the hive. The, the, obviously, all the hives are, are, are random, so if you and people are just sort of randomly picking a hive to, to, um, to work on. So if the brick's flat, that means it hasn't, nothing's been done as yet. If the brick's on its side, that means it's already been done. And if the brick's up on end, that means that it'll need to be checked again 
at, at, at a later date. So just a n nice little system. Yeah. No, he doesn't. No. I guess he could, though, because when the queen cells actually are put, put in the mating nukes, there's still, I mean, many of them, quite a lot of royal jelly in, in the queen cell still. So that's, that's how much royal jelly, jelly is. But no, he doesn't, no. Uh, OK, thanks, Steve. Oh, there's me there. Um, just, uh, no gloves, that's pretty brave for me, I think. <laughs> I couldn't bring any bee gear. I, I just bought a white shirt. I'm in jeans and, and boots. Um, yeah, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I got stung a few times. But, <laughs> but uh, that's, that's part of the thing, isn't it, really? Yeah, thanks, too. Um, these, these are some of these production hooks. Go back one, Steve. So we had to drop off some nucleus hives here. So they're, they're honey hives, they're just production hives. So um, he harvests all his honey at the end of the season, but the top one, two, three, four boxes would be, and each of those would be full of honey. Yeah, his, his, uh, the, the, I don't know if it was just a good season when I was there, but it was just, the wildflowers were just profuse. Um, and even a lot of the deciduous trees like linden, or basswood were, were in flower. Um, yeah, it's quite amazing. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe sometimes they do, but yeah. Sorry. Do you, do you know if he under supers or over or puts them on top because there's he's got so many supers of honey there? Mm. Does he make the bees climb all the way to the top? Or no, no, no. There's, there's usually I know on the new car, but the other show in a minute, but there's usually holes at the top. It might be a, it might be a, I don't know. Is that a hole? I don't know. I have to. We'll see some more in a minute. I think there are chim what what they call chimneys. Is that because it's snow that the snow falls? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, they need to. That's right. Yeah, they need to be able and to get out. Sorry. That's a good question because you know, you know, here in Gippsland, I stress sometimes. Like, oh, I wonder if they've been out for a cleansing flight or can they get out? Because bees like us, we have to go. You know, have to empty our bowels or whatever. <laughs> um, but the last cleansing flight for his bees is in December. And the next one is in April. Oh. So four months, the bees don't can not get out for a cleansing flight. So that's that's just quite that's quite amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, these are. Um, I'm not sure what. I'm not sure if anybody's heard of these, but they, these are called push-in cages. Um, so you might not see it, it's, they're sort of push, they're, 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 all the sides are pushed up. Um, and they use these because in really strong hives, like the production hives, there's so many bees there, if you need to re-queen, um, you know, your new queen, it takes a while for her pheromone to be spread around the hive and the bees to accept her. So, they use these push-in cages and they'll take the, the queen out and they'll put her on a frame where there's a little bit of nectar and a few cells that she can lay in. Um, no, no workers or anything, no, no, no attendants, just the queen by herself and they'll push the cage over her and then they'll slip the, slip the frame back down into the hive and leave it there for, I can't remember now, for a couple of days or something like that, just, just for the workers to get used to it. And she'll start laying in those cells in the time, and then once once she's laying, the, the, they generally accept her. I've got a picture that I got off the net. Um, How big are those? Oh, they're just sort of like like this big. Ah, yeah. There's something to scan. So they fit inside the. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. So the queen's the queen's under the cage, un, under here, and she's got a few few cells to lay in. A little bit of you know, nectar and things like that to feed on, and then um, Mike basically says that when he takes the takes the frame out, 
Um, he just checks to see that the, the, bee, the worker bees on the outside aren't sticking to the cage like Velcro, because if they are, then maybe they haven't accepted it. So if you can just gently brush them off, then they're fine. And then he just pulls, off the, pulls the cage off and uh, everything should be right. Yeah. But that's, that's in a big, st strong hive. Um, one day, I think it was on the Wednesday, I went for a drive with Mike over Lake Champlain into uh, upper New York State. Um, thanks, Steve. Just to uh, do some general work on a couple of apiaries out there. Oh, yep, yeah. okay, there's, there's a photo of Mike and his van and his little trailer. But a fairly basic setup for uh, having all those hides. He's got the truck, but but he just told, yeah, that's basically what he goes around in. Yeah, well, Do you think he chose the colour of that diesel? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> that's a good point, actually. I didn't think of that. Does he use anything different to smoke? Pine needles or? Um, that's a good question. What do they use? I think they were using hay or straw or something like that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these are uh, nu nucleus hives, and there was a, I'll show you the hive in a minute that we're uh, sorting out. What do you think the electric fence is for? Yeah. Sorry? Bears. Bears? Bears? Oh, no. Okay, go to the next one. Black bears. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't actually see that there. That's so cute. Yeah, black bears, and um, they absolutely devastate an apiary. Um, and so they've got some pretty, pretty big, um, pretty powerful electric fences to keep, to keep them out. <laughs> Um, it does uh, well, we'll go to the next slide. This, that's one of Mike's apiaries a couple of years ago. He checked it two weeks previously, everything was fine. And then he came back and it was utter devastation. It was, and they don't go, it's not like Yogi Bear, they don't go for the honey, they like the, the larva because the, they're full of fat, full of protein. Yeah, yeah. And they. Um, yeah, so it's a bit like a power bar or something like that, or an energy bar. Yeah. So luckily Mike's got his sustainable apiary because he can just split off a whole lot of nukes and he's back to where he started. Yeah, so, but that was pretty devastating for him. <laughs> Is that just one bear you think? Yeah, I think, I'm not sure. I don't, he didn't see the bear, but yes, yeah. Gee, you want to meet while you're out working, would you? No. And so this, this is one thing we have to do. That, that, one nuclear, that's, that nucleus colony on that side is obviously uh, a bit congested, so that we needed to put another super on that box. As you can see, it's fairly congested. Okay, thanks, Steve. And there's, there's some of the apiaries that we went to, I know it sounds a bit strange, but they're a bit dreamy sort of thing. They were just like these wildflowers and quite just. Fabulous locations, right off the road. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know that there was an apiary there. Yeah. Um, I guess they do sometimes. Yeah. I don't think I took a, put a slide on, but there was a. There's some photos later of another apiary that I was at, and he. Sometimes you only have one side of a nuclear setup that's got bees in it and the other side you just put empty boxes so without any frames and we had one situation there where the yeah that a swarm had just gone into the the whole cavity of one side so that was yeah yeah so they do swarm sometimes yeah the, the nuclear these nucleus hive setups they 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 fill out fast they you know you have to keep your finger on the pulse with them otherwise they can get get away from you I guess yeah hmm. Yeah, and, and, Mark, and Mike's just uh, supering up here, so he's taken a, a frame of uh, brood out of that, that box that he's putting the new frame in, and he'll put a new box on top and um, put that one, fr one frame of brood in the new box. I don't know. Oh, that's a good question. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an upturn. Yeah, it's, it's an upturned pipe box, I think, but it was a good photo, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 
Um, actually, I didn't take a photo of the. I didn't take a photo of the um, the wax frame inserts, but they're actually the, the wooden frame isn't wired. They're, they're, those wax sheets have already got wire in them. Yeah. Um, I don't know how. And then they just sort of put a staple either side of places around it to, to keep it in. But I think Zach told me that when you're actually extracting, they don't sort of. They're not too good for that. I think. Well, they must. They must be able to extract, but they, they can blow out sometimes, I guess, because they're not not as well supported, I guess. Do they use plastic frames over there? I uh, didn't didn't see any plastic frames being used. No. Uh, sorry, who asked that question? Oh, uh, no, I didn't. I didn't see any there. No. So I'm not. And I didn't, didn't hear or see of any flow hives either. I mean, they must be there, but I mean, obviously it's a commercial type beekeeper, so he wouldn't be probably interested in those. But, uh... Did he say if he had any problem with uh, theft? Theft? Um... They're well hidden. Yeah, they're well hidden. Like I said, they're really off, off the road. No, I didn't. Didn't. No. Uh, and ladies, meet Zach. And he's just showing off his uh, better side here. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a smoker, is he in his pocket? Um, no, no, I don't think so. He's not a smoker, no. <laughs> no. Zach's been... He's hiding the chair. I'm sorry? They're teasing you, don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's just a... Yeah, Zach. That's Zach, the other main helper. Um, He's thinking of doing medicine, but he can't can't make up his mind. He loves beekeeping, and but is at an age now where he uh, says, "Oh, I'll, I'll be forty odd by the time I get out, you know, finishing medicine." So he's in a bit of a dilemma at the moment. I think I just told him to stick to beekeeping. I think <laughs> he's doing quite well actually. You he makes those cows almost. Oh, sorry, sorry go back. Um. You'd think so, wouldn't you? But I didn't, yeah. didn't, didn't, did, I didn't see any that I didn't see any that had fallen over. No, they they're pretty good actually. Yeah. Yeah. This was a pretty much the last day, second to last day. I think it was probably the icing on the cake because it was just again it was a beautiful day. We had to catch 150 queens, so this is a mating new yard again. As you can see, there's um, a lot of wild flowers out. It's quite a nice location, apart from the uh, high security prison that was just down the road. But that was, that was, <laughs> they, they always know when it's 12 o'clock because because when they're out in the field, because the, the uh, like siren or something goes off at the prison. Yeah. So. Yeah. What, what red base was using? Oh, that's oh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so with, <coughs> with Mike, he's using Caucasian VSH, so Varroa sensitive hygiene. Who asked me about Varroa a second ago? I think he's here. Rob. Um, so he's got a mixture of that, mainly dark bees, Caucasian, and he also, the only, he does buy coins occasionally for, for genetic diversity and things like that, but he also buys, a lot of people in the US buy VSH. Queen, so it's Varroa sensitive hygiene. So it's a, a bee, the, the, um, the bees can sense in, in, a, in a cat cell if, if a Varroa mite is reproducing and they'll decap the cell and they'll pull the larva out. The, the, mo the, mother, the mother Varroa mite can generally escape and get, get away, but all the, all the the offspring usually get destroyed by the by the bees, so that's how they keep. They don't sort of. I don't think they eradicate. The, they, don't, they don't eradicate the varroa totally out of the hives, but they keep it at a very low threshold. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. There's there's a few. There's there's one called Minnesota Hygienic, and I think that's where they. Sh See how hygienic they are. They get, they do a, a circle on a frame of brood, and they freeze it with dry ice or liquid nitrogen, and then they put the frame back in the hive, and then they see how well the, the queen um, cleans out the cells. So I think that's Minnesota hygienic. 
but there's, there's a few now. There's an, another uh, type of bee or another attribute that they're calling ankle biters. I don't know if you've heard of ankle biters before. They're not, it's not what happens to you, Rob, when you don't tuck your pants into your socks, okay? But, um, <laughs> but it's, um, they, the bees actually bite, bite the legs on the varroa mites, and, and the, the varroa mites sort of bleed and, and they're incapable of moving around. So, yeah, I've got a, at the end I've got a, a photo of that. Okay, well, different people do different things, but I, I, from what I gather, most people treat probably with chemicals or strips twice a year, but from Mike's standpoint, he was, he treated after he extracted all his honey in, in autumn, and he was using Amitraz strips, so they just sort of slip down in between the frames. So, Harvest the honey, put, put the strips in, and then that's it for the for the season. Um, now the commercial strips for Amitraz, from what I understand, they're about three percent, I think. Um, but Mike makes his own. He actually buys Amitraz in in bulk and makes his own strips, and he he makes ten percent strips. And I, I, when I heard that at first, I was Quite, quite shocked because I mean in, in Australia usually you know you go by the guidelines and but there's a there's some belief that the three percent strips are sort of below lethal dose they're not not strong enough so there are some people that treat with a stronger um, yeah higher concentration and it sort of they believe that it just it knocks them off and the half life apparently is such that by the time the next season comes and the, the amitraz is, um, dis oh, I want to say the word, dissipated or broken down or, yeah. So he, yeah, so he does the amitraz thing. Um, he's got the varroa sensitive hygiene. Um, he's breeding local queens suited, suited to the local environment. Um, no, I, I think yeah, I think I know what you mean. Sometimes they put in drone comb to get them to make drone brood and then the mites are attracted to the... Yeah, they prefer the drone brood more than the worker brood. No, he wasn't... I, he didn't say he was doing anything like that. Uh, and does he have a mesh base underneath the... Uh, on the floor of the... Uh, the tray to count? No, no, he doesn't. But, but there are inspectors that come around and actually take samples and things like that. Interestingly enough, they were saying that um, in the early days, it took for a hive to fail for varroa, it took a, a, a greater threshold, a, a greater number of mites to actually cause a hive to collapse. But now, with all the viral problems there are now, like the form wing virus, and I can't remember them all, but um, there's a number of viruses, it takes a lower number of mites to actually cause cause the hive to collapse because um, now the virus viruses are in, in now the viruses are on the scene. Um, not much, you know, the, not the mites are biting the bees, so the viruses are being introduced. And interestingly, Zach said, I'm not sure how true this is, that when they needed um, bees for pollination in the US for almonds and things, they got bees from Australia. And Zach, Zach was saying that they actually got some of the viruses from Australia. <laughs> but they're not a problem for us because we don't have varroa and so, you know, the bees' protective barrier isn't being, isn't being um, compromised. So the viruses aren't a problem if, you know, if the bees aren't being attacked by mites. What's your theory on the sort of colony collapse that they're experiencing? He did, yeah, um, he, I don't know what his theory is, but he basically said that when colony collapse started coming out, there was, um, you can see this on one of his lectures on YouTube, but he, he, he sort of thought it was almost like a joke in a way, because they, were, they weren't seeing it. You know, I think, I think maybe then he started producing his own queens and, and things like that, so, and, you know, suited to his local conditions, so maybe, Maybe that had part of a, um, 
had a part to play, um, but he didn't. No, he didn't say what the theory was. No. Peter, I'm was there any conversation with using the insecticide that it might accumulate in the tumour? Uh, Insect the anaphrase or? Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't. Didn't ask him that. That's a good point, but I didn't. Yeah, I, guess, I think he would probably look up the notes, on, you know, the material safety data and that or whatever on the, and find that out. But I think it breaks down. Yeah. I'm hmm. um, sorry. Uh, yeah. So this, so coin cash day. Um, these are not two-way nukes. These are four-way nukes in the same size box. Oh, making nukes. So that's a quarter of the box we've opened there. So there's four coins in that in that one box. To look, look for. Oh, okay, that's right. She's pulling a frame out. I thought she was just holding something as well. Oh, sorry. Can you go back one? And here. And they use um, he uses grain bags as um, top boards. A lot of his hives just have the the lid and the and the uh, the grain bag. I thought that was interesting. Uh, no, no, just like you, you know, you go to the Wait, farm yeah. store and you, you get a bag of. Oh, um, that's not all the bags. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So this is this is basically what the setup is when you when they're looking for a plane. There's usually two people sitting down, and that's uh, Doc. She's only started beekeeping actually in the last couple of years. She was quite a tough old bird, I think. Um, she got stung on the nose and she was just like, like that, and that was, that was it, sort of thing. <laughs> no, no swearing at all. <laughs> yeah, and so that's... She oh, sorry. I don't know if she could. Yeah. No, no, they're going. Oh, oh, no, that's cork. He's got the... I think he's got all his tools and his knife and all that. Stop waiting for the bed. Oh, right. <laughs> that's cork. That's what she's there for. <laughs> so the guy with the back right there, that's cork. He's one of the other workers. And the guy... Facing me, you can't really see it. I think he's, I can't remember his name, but he was a school teacher. School teachers don't get paid during the holidays in the US, so he's doing this as a, as a job to, you know, to earn a bit of money as well. Oh, there's me, yeah, looking for the queen. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> And sometimes it's all hands on deck. You can't. Sometimes you just uh, can't find the queen. So yeah, I think that's all I can need to say about that. <laughs> and sometimes when you open, it's a pity it's just a bit, bit lower. I don't, that's all right. Deal with it. But this, um, when you open a hundred, you know, looking for one hundred and fifty queens, sometimes you see interesting things. Um, and down at the bottom here is a uh, laying worker. You see all the eggs in the one in the one cup. I haven't seen a laying worker before, so I think, I think it's the guilty party on the left hand side here looking at us. <laughs> right here. It's probably her fault. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, yes, they are, actually, yeah. I'm not sure if they they don't produce, the uh, in first half, they don't produce drones, do they? They, 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 produce they drones. do produce drones, yeah. 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 Okay, in first half, they <coughs> produce drones, yeah. That's my reason. Uh, 35 degrees and 80% humidity was, uh, that's one thing I'll adopt with, with Mike, is he always had an esky in his trailer. <laughs> always had a few beers in it, at lunchtime, you'd have a nice cold beer, so that was, that was really good. You've got to change your way of <laughs> Sorry? Change the way you do it now? Yeah, absolutely. Can you leave it on a little bit longer? And what can people see in this slide? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. No? I only saw one my whole time on the last, second last day. One row, one. And that's, that's, you know, out of all the hives that I looked at, I only saw one, one of the row, and that's probably the female one. Apparently they sort of hop out of the cell and they'll ride around on the back of the bee for a little while and then they'll slip into another cell where there's a larvae and they'll sort of get... Yeah, go into the larvae and um, it'll be capped and then she'll 
that grower and it is a, something that we don't want, obviously. Um, but it was heartening to see really good, strong, productive hives. Um, yeah, that was great. How will the experience change your beekeeping? My beekeeping? Um, well, I, 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 I followed Mike to start following Mike. If, if you want to see what he's like, you can go on YouTube, yeah. YouTube type in Mike Palmer, sustainable apiary. Um, I'm keen to start, you know, start a little sustainable apiary on the side that will supply my main colony, my honey producing colonies. Um, and I, I want, I'd like to get into some queen breeding as well. So Rob, if you wouldn't mind doing, yeah. Um, yeah, a bit of queen breeding. Um, yeah, so the sustainable apiary side of things, I think, we don't, we don't have four feet of snow and we don't have, um, you know, varroa and, and things like that yet, but I think I think it's a great idea to have this apiary with its supplying all your, all, all, all your needs to be made to produce, producing colonies. And an eskimo Sorry? And an eskimo. That's right.
trachea of, of the bee, and it basically does the same thing as varroa, sort of sucks the, the blood on the lymph, lymph of the bee. And I think there's one more there. One more slide, sorry, Spanish. And this is what I was talking about, the ankle biters. Um, so these are, these are the row of mine, but if you look closely where the arrows are, you can see the big bits of leg have been, been bit, bitten off. So that's promising. But from, from what I said, the, the way that they end up, there's a sticky board down the bottom of the hive, so the, the varroa mine drops the bottom of the hive, but they're, they're careful that they only pick up the mites that are on their backs because it's a sticky board, so they don't want to sort of pull the mite off and count that as a ankle biter because they might be breaking the, the mites as they pull it off the board. So, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for that. I don't need to get you this guy. No, you don't. Okay, so we. You always did the same. Something. So you'll have to thank Peter for. Sorry.